Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections in STAD Pro using RAM connection. In this video, we will focus on designing base plates for all of the columns that were assigned a fixed support. We will now turn our attention to our sample model where we will focus on designing our fixed base plates. The first step in our workflow is to select the supports that were assigned as fixed through the analytical modeling mode. To do that, we're going to go to our select tab in a ribbon toolbar and use our filter item to select all of the supports that were assigned as support number two. Once the supports are selected, we're ready to assign some connection templates. To start that process, we'll go to the Connection Design tab in the ribbon toolbar and select the Smart Connection Workflow. We'll tell the program that we would like to design a fixed uniaxial both axis base plate. And we'll move this over to the selected area. In addition to that, you also have options to design fixed biaxial base plates and also fixed uniaxial base plates with bending about the major or minor axis. Once you've selected the appropriate template, we will click OK and we'll start our connection design. Now, fixed base plates typically take a little bit longer than other types of connections in RAM connection. If the process is taking too long, you can always choose to design one fixed base plate at a time. After the design is complete, you're going to review your RAM connection validation report. I see the status of several connections are set to OK, and we have a couple that are set to not designed. Let's go ahead and click close here and take a look at the RAM connection input dialog. Now, although several connections said OK, I'm seeing in the RAM connection input dialog that their interaction ratios are 1.0, which is perhaps a little bit higher than I would feel comfortable leaving them. I also have several base plates that are in yellow, meaning that they were not designed. I know they weren't designed because I got the message and they have an interaction ratio of zero. Let's go ahead and adjust a couple of these base plates to see some possible ways that we might be able to rectify this situation. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on one of the base plates that were not designed. So I'm gonna double click on the base plate to bring up my connection pad. Once we are in the connection pad, we'll see that the interaction ratio is not available because this particular base plate was not designed. Now, before we do anything, let's go ahead and take a look at the results to see if we can gain some more information. Now, we are provided with a note that is recommended to change the base plate dimensions or enable the strain compatibility option. So let's go ahead and close out of there and find the strain compatibility option first. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this checkbox. Now, considering the strain compatibility ensures that the concrete and anchor strains are taken into account 
in the analysis to obtain the stress on the plate and the anchors respectively. When the strain compatibility is not considered, the analysis assumes that the bearing stress shall be equal to the maximum allowable concrete bearing capacity, and then the anchor forces are considered to achieve the forces equilibrium. Now that we've considered our strain compatibility, we can see that an interaction ratio has now been provided, meaning that this base plate has been designed and since our interaction ratio is greater than 1.0, it did fail the initial code check. Now that we've gotten a base plate that's designed, we're going to tell the program we now want to optimize this base plate considering the strain compatibility that we specified. Now when we select the optimize command, the program will use this optimization criteria, which you can customize if you wish. Now we're going to scroll down and I can see that we are given an interaction ratio of 1.0. It is in green, meaning that it did pass the code check. Now again, this interaction ratio might be slightly higher than I feel comfortable with. So I may want to continue to modify the parameters until I get to a... So I may want to continue modifying some of the parameters until I get to a connection design or base plate design that I prefer. So I'm going to come down here. Let's take a look at this base plate. And I would prefer something a little bit wider. So I'm going to change my transverse dimension of my base plate. Instead of 14 inches, let's bump it up to 20 inches. Now I can see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0. And it is in green, meaning that it passed the code check without producing any warnings. Now if I like this new base plate design, I can click Save, and then I can close out of the connection pad, and you can see that has been reflected correctly considering the changes I just made. Let's also take a look at one of these other base plates that have a high interaction ratio. So I'll go ahead and double click on this one. Now this one should come up a little bit quicker because it did achieve a, a passing connection design. So here I can see, again, my interaction ratio is 1.0. And let's make uh, some different changes on this base plate than we had previously so we can see the full capabilities of what we can do in RAM connection. So for this one, I'm also going to consider strain compatibility. So I'll go ahead and select that checkbox. Let's scroll down and see some of the other parameters we may want to consider changing. Now for this base plate, I'm going to include some grouting below the base plate so I can have it detailed accordingly. And I'm going to take a look this time at my uh, base plate size and also my anchor bolt layout. I would prefer to customize these a little closer towards my company standards. So for this one, I'm going to say it is a 26 inch by 26 inch base plate. We can see we're already doing better. Um, I can customize my base plate thickness. Let's go with two inches. And in addition to that, if I would prefer, I can also create a custom anchor bolt layout. So here I've decided to add some additional anchor bolts. I'm going to change my anchor position to customized. And if you would like to create a customized anchor bolt, you can fr feel free to do that. Now, these coordinates for the anchor bolts are measured from the center of the base plate. So anything going up in, say, the positive quadrant would have positive value on the coordinate, or if it's going towards the negative side of the center line of the base plate, it would be reflected accordingly. So let's go ahead and click OK. Here I have my new custom layout. Now, including that, I can also include some lock nuts. I can change the material of my anchor bolts. I can change the embedment, I can weld my anchors, and I can also consider other things like brittle steel or cracked concrete. In addition to that, if I needed to design this with some type of pedestal, I can select this checkbox here. With this checkbox unselected, it will assume that it is uh, being embedded directly in a footing. Now, if everything looks acceptable here, and I like this anchor bolt layout, and this is how I would choose to detail it on my drawings, I can click the Save button, and then close out of the connection pad. And again, I've 
achieved a lower interaction ratio, which was my goal with that exercise. Now this concludes our process for designing fixed base plates in RAM connection. Of course, you'd want to continue this with the rest of your fixed base plates um, as it looks like each one of these will need some custom parameters assigned to them. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.